Uh, the SEC denied and has been stalling uh, the approval of options trading on these spot ETFs. It's slowing them down. So just, you know, those are coming a year or two years later than they probably ought to come. If you agree that Bitcoin is a spot asset, why not approve the options uh, for the same spot ETFs? And then the SEC uh, denied in-kind in creates. So you couldn't just trade your Bitcoin for the ETF. Hey guys, welcome back to Everyday Finance. In this video, Michael Saylor discusses Bitcoin and crypto. Michael Saylor believes that the SEC's approval of Greenlight has provided Bitcoin with the necessary boost to increase its value from a multi-hundred billion dollar asset. With the approval of the ETFs, there has been a significant political shift in the United States. The success of these ETFs has demonstrated to Wall Street the immense potential of the cryptocurrency industry. We have transitioned from a time of uncertainty regarding the future of Bitcoin and crypto in the United States to an era where it has become a prominent topic in political campaigns. During his speech at the Libertarian National Convention on Saturday, former US President and current leading candidate of the Republican Party, Donald Trump, expressed his endorsement for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. He enthusiastically promised to foster the growth of the industry in the U.S. if elected as president in November, which was met with an enthusiastic response from the crowd. Trump announced his intention to halt Joe Biden's efforts to regulate cryptocurrency. I will prioritize the future of crypto and Bitcoin being developed in the USA rather than being driven overseas. With your vote, I will advocate for the right to self-custody for the nation's 50 million crypto holders. I made it clear during a recent interview with Peter McCormack, host of the What Bitcoin Did podcast, that I am committed to protecting your Bitcoin from any interference by Elizabeth Warren and her associates. Furthermore, I firmly stated my opposition to the establishment of a central bank digital currency. A sailor warns that the winds of change are blowing through Washington, advising politicians who are against cryptocurrency that they must either join the movement or face the consequences of opposing an industry that will fiercely defend itself. It is evident that with the involvement of Wall Street and the banks in the Bitcoin and crypto industry, politicians will be compelled to acknowledge the widespread acceptance of digital assets and concede their defeat. And lots of things Michael Saylor discusses, so please watch the video to end and like, share this video and subscribe our channel, Everyday Finance. Thanks. Bitcoin was unstable and it was unclear whether the Republican administration was in favor of it or against and then maybe they leaned against it. And I think that um, the Democratic administration came in and Gensler came in and actually um, the administration flipped from Bitcoin is a digital currency competing with the dollar, we should ban it, to Bitcoin is a digital commodity, speculative asset, doesn't compete with the dollar, we don't have to ban it. So the, uh, the first con contribution of Gensler was to actually legitimize it as a digital asset and a digital commodity. I think that Gensler, you know, respects Satoshi, believes in the vision of Bitcoin, always did. We know that, you know, I've listened to all of his lectures at MIT. So he came in as, <clears throat> as someone appreciating Bitcoin as a digital commodity. What happened next is a very, con you know, Gensler then established uh, the principle, the proof of work is superior to proof of stake. And so you got, so I'm gonna lay out the positives, the, the contributions Gensler's made. He, you know, he legitimized Bitcoin as a digital commodity. He showed the world how you create something decentralized. He, he pointed out Satoshi, you know, and the immaculate conception is the right principle. He pointed out that staking is probably an investment contract and he explained why going to proof of stake is not a good idea. Then he was very hyper conservative in, in uh, normalizing Bitcoin in the ecosystem holding back for a while, eventually, right? We have to go to all the way to 2024, January before we get the approval of the spot ETFs for Bitcoin. But the single most important thing that happened in this epic was the approval of the spot Bitcoin ETFs. That, that, that basically was crossing of the chasm, which said that Bitcoin is not 
a multi hundred billion dollar asset class. Bitcoin is a 10 to 100 trillion dollar asset class. So that was a 10X to 100X. And so, so we got that from this, this regime, but I think in the meantime, uh, the SEC has basically been very, very obstructionist, uh, you know, and at war with the entire crypto industry. And we know that, mm. right? Uh, you know, suing all the crypto exchanges, suing a lot of the entrepreneurs. And, and uh, what we didn't get, right? We, we got um, a very passive, what is the word? Like a, a minimalist embracement of Bitcoin embracing a Bitcoin a by the CEO. Very <laughs> yeah. reluctant under under protest. Yeah. Embracing. And then there were a couple things that happened that were triggers. Uh, the SEC denied and has been stalling uh, the approval of options trading on these spot ETFs. It's slowing them down. So just, you know, those are coming a year or two years later than they probably ought to come. If you agree that Bitcoin is a spot asset, why not approve the options? Uh, for the same spot ETFs. And then the SEC uh, denied in-kind in creates. So you couldn't just trade your Bitcoin for the ETF. And so that both of those make the spot ETFs inferior. And then uh, the SEC put forth SAB 121 that made it impossible for a bank to custody Bitcoin. So we got the minimal... Uh, acceptance of of Bitcoin, legitimate. It's like the minimal thing I can do to legitimize it. But these other logical things. Bitcoin has reached new heights this year, thanks to two significant factors in January. The approval of spot ETFs and the just had a really exciting event. Crypto has seen a significant increase of over 60% year to date. On Friday, it was trading about 6% below its all-time highs reached in March. While the factors that drove this surge are still expected to continue pushing Bitcoin's price higher, investors are now contemplating where to find additional opportunities for growth. Analysts have identified several potential catalysts that could contribute to the continued rise in Bitcoin's price. Here, we outline four of these upcoming factors. Investors are closely monitoring the Federal Reserve's stance on interest rate cuts, as they believe it could potentially lead to a rally in stocks. This same phenomenon also applies to Bitcoin, which is often traded as a speculative asset that tends to appreciate when borrowing costs are lower. In fact, the record-breaking rally of Bitcoin in 2021 was largely driven by the ultra-low interest rates. However, the rally reversed when the Federal Reserve began tightening its monetary policy. In addition to the interest rates, the first quarter also saw the introduction of the HING and a significant adoption of the ETF, which further impacted the market. Now, investors are eagerly awaiting the Federal Reserve's next moves and how it will influence the market. Outer Space CEO Mike Novak Gratz shared with Bloomberg earlier this month that Bitcoin is expected to remain within a range of $55,000 to $73,000 until short-term interest rates decline. He also mentioned the impact of shifting regulations at this stage. The crypto community is also seeking clarity on the regulatory front, which has often posed challenges for Bitcoin. For example, the Securities and Exchange Commission's decision to approve a spot ETF was met with disappointment due to a court ruling. However, the legal sentiment surrounding crypto appears to be adapting. One potential catalyst for Bitcoin's future could be the imminent arrival of stable coins. Bill Oppenheimer, the executive director of Owen Law, stated in an interview with CNBC in early May, that a significant development could occur as early as this year. In addition, the US House of Representatives recently approved a comprehensive regulatory framework for the crypto industry, which is seen as a positive outcome for the sector. However, the fate of this legislation in the Senate remains uncertain. If passed, it would provide the cryptocurrency sphere with clearer guidelines and regulations. Let's get back to Michael Saylor interview. Let let the banks custody. Let people hedge it, and and then um, you know let them trade Bitcoin for securities. These things, which would normally be cust they're normal and customary in any other asset, 
they were denied. And so we're going at a very slow rate. So, so they're letting you in the race, but they're blindfolding you and cutting a leg off. Well, I think that that created a lot of friction between yeah. the Bitcoin community and the SEC, right? Then you have the friction between the crypto community and the SEC, which well, I don't have to go over it, yeah. right? There's a hundred stories, man. And that was exacerbated by the fact that over the course of four years, the SEC never put forth uh, a digital assets framework. Right, so you've got an entire industry, and for it to live, it needs a, you. You need a way to establish a digital commodity versus a digital security versus a digital exchange versus a digital currency. And the position of of the regulator in this case was, I'm not giving you any framework, and the implication is, you guys all have to just roll over and die. So, 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 how do you tell 400 million people that support an industry, and the entire industry? that they all just have to cease operating, right? And so, so that's a very, uh, a very obstructionist view, like a non-constructive view toward, toward the crypto industry. And then I think the third, the third thing that happened here is, is um, we had a lot of banks, you know, there are rumors in the market that there were banks that spent $100 million or more to get ready to do Bitcoin custody. Okay, so you have a bunch of banks spending money, they're ready to do it, and then SAB 121 is just capriciously denying them of the ability to do it without explanation. Okay, and, I, and that brought the, the SAB 129 debate because, sorry, SAB 121 means Wall Street, the banking law, the bankers, the crypto lobby, and the Bitcoin lobby, all four of those constituencies all all side together on the same issue. So that being the case, the SAB 121 repeal comes up and then the position of the administration is we're proactively gonna veto it. And now you basically have the administration against Wall Street and crypto and Bitcoin and the banks, right? And you have the welling up of frustration over four years, which, which reached a fever pitch and the combination of that plus the ETH ETF coming up for approval with the expectation that it's going to be denied, punctuated by the lawsuits against Uniswap and MetaMask, which kind of are what caused people to conclude it would be denied. I mean, we all thought it'd be denied two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I thought it would be denied. The entire consensus, even the Ethereans thought it'd be denied. So that brings everything to a head. In November's election, the real regulatory clarity will come after the presidential election, as Novigrad mentioned. It is worth mentioning that Republican candidate Donald Trump has emerged as a strong advocate for the industry, which stands in contrast to President Biden's policies, as observed in a note from May. According to Standard Chartered's Jeff Kendrick, a potential Trump victory would have a positive impact on Bitcoin. He further explained that concerns over the US deficit and debt have contributed to this sentiment. Given the current trends, it is highly probable that Bitcoin will experience a boost in value. Investors are increasingly looking for alternative investment options, especially since neither candidate has presented a clear plan to address government spending. Kendrick mentioned that there has been a shift in outlooks on Bitcoin, as developers have been actively working to enhance its functionality. This ongoing effort aims to transform the cryptocurrency from a speculative asset into something more versatile. With various projects in the pipeline, Bitcoin could potentially offer additional benefits. For example, the recently released Ordinals protocol has opened up new possibilities for users. It allows them to store more than just Bitcoin on the BTC blockchain and start trading assets like non-fungible tokens. The Ordinals market has already seen impressive daily trading volume, reaching 3.42 million. Gracie Chen, the managing director at Mayday Bigot, highlighted the growing demand for Ordinals on Bitcoin. In response, they created the BRC20 token standard, and now the Runes token standard has also contributed to the increasing interest in viewing Bitcoin as a platform network, rather than just a monetary asset. Network Galaxy wrote in a note, and now such projects are attracting significant attention from venture investors, it said. 
Yes, if you learned something from this video, then please like this video and subscribe our channel Everyday Finance. And we will meet in next video. Thanks.